Today was January 6th, 2017. A normal day for most, but a very monumental day for two very important Roblox developers. Just months before he would finish his senior year at Trinity Preparatory School in Florida, Alex Balfins, also known as the famous Roblox developer, Bad CC, would come to begin development of a new game with his friend who goes by the alias Asimo3089. The created a group for the game called Batamo, and then several months later, April 21st, 2017, they would officially release the game for beta release. But what they didn't know, however, is this would not just be any new Roblox game on the platform. This one new Roblox game would proceed to change the face of Roblox for years to come. This is the story of Jailbreak, the game that changed Roblox forever. The question is, why did Jailbreak make such a huge impact on Roblox? And how did it even come to be? Let's go. It's kind of late, bro. Safe. They're always on high alert at night. Look, there's a guy out right there. Yo, bro. Go, 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 just... go. All right, get in the car. Get in the not car. just take a cop car. No, you dip over here. Shortly after its release on April 21st, 2017, the Roblox community went crazy over Jailbreak. Many Roblox YouTubers started covering this game immediately off release, with 60,000 people playing on day one. On top of all the praise Jailbreak got for its gameplay, the community couldn't help but call it better than Prison Life, the previous most popular game on Roblox. If you don't know what Prison Life is, Prison Life was one of the first prison games on Roblox, and the one to start the trend of prison games on Roblox in the first place. In the early days, people may say that Jailbreak was a copy of Prison Life, but in reality, Jailbreak was inspired by it. Bad CC said himself that he found the game Prison Life simple and fun, but he wanted to do something more. Bad CC also said, after you escaped the prison, there wasn't much to do at all. And he was right. There wasn't much to do in Prison Life after escaping other than fighting. Jailbreak had so much more to offer than Prison Life. Everything from new game mechanics to the overall objective made the gameplay something completely new and innovative. Jailbreak had a better prison, better cars, and overall better map. The only thing Prison Life had on Jailbreak in the early days was better weapons. The reason so many people loved Jailbreak right off the bat was not only because it was overall a more polished game, but also because it had so much potential. The game was more pleasing to look at with a well-designed custom UI, and was overall more fast-paced and exhilarating. It was no secret that Batamo had struck gold with the gameplay aspect. I mean, the game was only in beta and was already being acclaimed as better than the previous most popular game on Roblox. But you may be wondering, what exactly made Jailbreak so much better? In the words of Bad CC, I also saw a void in the market. The two games that were popular weren't that advanced and I knew I could really bring it to the next level. And that's exactly what Bad CC and Asimo did when they added this simple but game-changing feature. They added capitalism. Jailbreak's bank robbery and bounty collection features added a whole other goal to the game. The two other prison games, Prison Life and Redwood Prison, were just escaping and going back to fight, or stopping prisoners from escaping. There was no depth to the game, just like Bad CC mentioned, the two games that were popular weren't that advanced. But now with money added to the mix, there was so much more opportunity. Though at the time of early jailbreak, it was a little rough. Cops had the obvious advantage to this, which caused mania in the community. Due to the bank being the only robbery in the game at the time, cops would always camp at the bank, and it was really hard for criminals to earn any money. 
This is the earliest form of camping cots, and why they immediately became so controversial within the community. This was a huge problem, and it made it hard for any criminals to do anything in the game. They couldn't get any money, and they couldn't even defend themselves well. It made it really hard to get started in the game. Yet despite this issue, Panama would eventually solve this problem with the next big update. Over the next few updates, the changes were pretty small. Batamo started adding car classics such as the Lambo and the Porsche, as well as many other bug fixes were made. The next update after that didn't seem like much at first. It was a daily missions update. It was also the special fidget spinner rims event, which as most veteran jailbreak players know is probably the rarest item in the game to this day. If you have the spinner rims, there is no doubt that you are a true jailbreak veteran. But there wasn't really much hype to this update. Like I said before, this update didn't seem like much. Hell, daily missions didn't even stick around in the game the way they were back then. But then, one week later, something big happened. So what if I told you that this small update was a hype up for one of the most important jailbreak updates in history? I mean, what's a better way of bringing players back than a limited time item? The next update was not just any update. This update would be the building block for better ways for criminals to earn money and jailbreak forever. This was the jewelry store update. I had to was punch these things over and over again and get up then you can avoid a lot of these cameras. in the laser room, dodge the lasers. This was a big change of pace for jailbreak. The jewelry store was an instant success in the community. Being the second robbery in the game, it brought a whole new variety to the game. Sure, cops could still camp, but it wasn't as easy for them to camp and bust criminals as it was for the bank. For one, cops couldn't actually enter the jewelry store once it was under robbery, which made it easier for criminals to get through the store without being ambushed by cops. The camping was way more predictable and easier to combat than in the bank. This also set the standard that there would probably be way more robberies to come, which was super exciting knowing the game was far from perfect and far from its best. The jewelry store set the stage for so much more to come. I made it! No, I did it! <laughs> jewelry stores may also come a very violent place for combat. Well, watch him fling one of us into the laser. As much as the jewelry store update was definitely one of the most important for shaping the future, it was definitely not the biggest nor the best. Jailbreak still had a long way to go. Releasing more and more updates, new features, and bug fixes were common. The game was in beta after all, so small but common updates made sense. Everything from more vehicles to small features such as tire popping. They even made the weapons better and added small store robbers. The hype was truly real. But all this was just the beginning. It wasn't going to be long before one of the biggest updates in jailbreak history would be released. No, when I say one of the biggest updates in jailbreak history, I don't only mean jailbreak. This next update single-handedly broke barriers in Roblox history. Jailbreak is already a defining point in Roblox, having the highest concurrent player counts any game has ever had before. To give you an idea, when Prison Life was the most popular game on Roblox, it could only reach around 20,000, maybe 30,000 concurrent players at its peak. Jailbreak on a good day tripled, even quadrupled that to something like 80,000 players. But what Jailbreak was about to pull off with its next update was about to be a monumental point for concurrent player counts. This is how Jailbreak's official release update broke Roblox records forever. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the brand new Jailbreak update. We have a brand new escape, a mini map in the bottom left corner, new map locations. So if you go over here, right by the visitor location, we're going to explode the wall right here. It's a pretty creative escape. On August 13th, 2017, Batamo finally released Jailbreak out of beta and into its official release. This was a huge step for Jailbreak as it meant Jailbreak is now officially a game and not just a beta test of one. All those small feature additions, all those bug fixes, all led up to this moment. It was a big moment nonetheless. Being the release update didn't mean it had to release a lot, it just meant that the game was officially in a complete enough state to be considered a finished game, which is a massive defining point for Jailbreak. The features added in this update may not seem like a lot, but additions such as the minimap and the new prison escape were very defining in their own way. I mean, just doing something as simple as adding a new prison escape made it easier for prisoners to escape without being camped by cops. So yeah, the small features were super important to the game. 
but they were never the main reason this update was so important in Jailbreak history. You see, Jailbreak was the first for many things on Roblox. Jailbreak was already arguably the best developed Roblox game on the platform, and it's only been out for three and a half months. It also shined in many ways like its exponential growth to popularity on the platform. However, one of the first examples happened to be this update, and it also happened to be one of Jailbreak's most defining moments. After Batamo dropped the update, the game broke a huge milestone in Roblox history. Jailbreak became the first ever Roblox game to hit 100,000 concurrent players. Note, before Jailbreak even hit 100,000, it had already broken the concurrent player record at the very start. Just three days after beta release, the game had already reached 75,000 concurrent players, which was unheard of back in 2017. Not only that, but the game instantly skyrocketed to 44 million overall visits in the first three weeks of beta release. But Jailbreak did not stop there, and the Jailbreak community grew so fast after that. As the community and hype for the game grew, the updates and game quality only grew with it. Which I mean makes sense, when you're the developers of a hit game, you gotta keep the hype hot. That's why we need to talk about the 2017 Winter Update. All those Jailbreak players out there know there are two times a year that are the most important for Jailbreak. The Jailbreak Summer Updates, and the Jailbreak Winter Updates. Why are these updates so important? Well, because these are the two times a year that Batamo releases new robberies to the community. Though this robbery was a little special at first. It wasn't your normal everyday store robbery. This was the Jailbreak Cargo Train Robbery. And as soon as the train goes over, we're gonna jump on it and hopefully get the red. This is how it's done. All right, all right, let's go. The train will fling you all over the place and fling you out of the train, but it seems to be working now, so that's good. We're gonna time out. I think. Oh my gosh, see, that's what- The addition of the cargo train was definitely really cool and hype, but really funny at the same time. I mean, this damn thing couldn't stay on the tracks whatsoever, and the players would commonly be kicked off of it. It instantly became infamously known for its glitchiness. Yet no one was mad about it. Why? Well, because who could be mad at trying to derail a cargo train? Along with the new robbery comes a famous winter map, which improves every year, and a whole new bank vault design. Yes, the winter vibes were definitely on point. But the reason this update was so hype was not just because of the contents, but in the early days of Jailbreak, Batamo knew how to hype up the community. One of the fun facts about Jailbreak in the first years of development was that every update had a new easter egg. I mean seriously, I guess Asimo really loved giving the community something to look forward to. Who could forget the star behind the waterfall? One of the most classic and well-known easter eggs. Why am I mentioning easter eggs? While well, the train had been hinted at in the game for months from an easter egg. Being hidden behind the train tunnel at the edge of the map, the train had been on the map for a while already. How did the community guess this so fast? While well, a lot of the YouTubers in the community, such as Creekcraft, would theorize and report on any news in the Jailbreak community, the train theory was no exception. It kept the hype high as the community had something mysterious to get excited for. Speaking of the impact YouTube had on Jailbreak, one of the most important things in the game's growth is the community. Back then, Jailbreak's community was still fairly new, but it grew fast. Jailbreak was lucky to be filled with so many content creators who brought a chill and fun vibe to the community of Jailbreak. Creators like Creekcraft, Napkinate, and my username is this, were some of the most influential Jailbreak creators back in the day. So let's talk about their impact on the community of Jailbreak. Creekcraft. Currently one of the most influential Roblox YouTubers on the platform, Creek made a huge impact on the community of Jailbreak in the early days. But he didn't start making a lot of videos on the game until around the time the game was fully released. Before then, he only made a few Jailbreak videos and streamed every so often. Before making Roblox content, Creek used to be a Minecraft YouTuber for the first few years of his YouTube channel. He started playing Roblox on his channel about a year before Jailbreak's release, and will continue this even after Jailbreak's release. Creek built a huge community making videos on Jailbreak, which led to him even getting his own easter egg in the game. 
Puig was also well known for his streaming of the games he played, so more often than not, in the early days, you would often find him streaming jailbreak as well. These streams and videos would go to collect a lot of views over the year, leading to his exponential growth as a Roblox creator. While many were fans of Creek's videos and streams, I was not. I never really watched or paid much attention to the videos he made. But I am aware he had a massive impact on the game's growth and upholding the YouTube community. This is why he goes down as one of the most impactful jailbreak YouTubers slash the most impactful jailbreak streamer of all time. Napkin Nate Napkin Nate was the only jailbreak YouTuber I watched back in the day. Before he became solely a jailbreak YouTuber, he would stick to making videos on the Roblox game Apocalypse Rising. He also every now and then made videos on the Roblox Egg Hunts. Most of his videos wouldn't reach over 100k, with a few of his Egg Hunt videos doing really well every now and then. After moving to Jailbreak back when it was released in 2017, he saw instant success with his videos. All of his older videos today have over 100k, most of which would break 300 to 400k. Over time, he would make more and more Jailbreak videos, getting better views on average, even getting some 700k viewed videos. But then he hit the big 1 million views on his flying car glitch video, and then 2 million views with his Halloween special posted on October 29th, 2017. His channel only grew more and more after that. He continued to make videos on a variety of games, but stuck to Jailbreak as his main source of content. His videos would be really fun to watch, as even though they were update videos, he would always include his fan base in the video, leading to some very funny and strange moments. Being one of the big creators, Napkin Nate earned his own cosmetic items in one of Jailbreak's season passes later on, solidifying him as one of the greats in Jailbreak history. Now however, Napkin Nate doesn't make much content on YouTube anymore, but there's not a doubt in my mind that he goes down as one of the funniest Jailbreak creators of all time. These two content creators were super influential on the game in a positive way. They brought content to the community that hyped us up and brought us together. The community in general also did this, from the fan artists to the general fan base to even other YouTubers such as Ant. The Jailbreak community everywhere were just as influential on Jailbreak as Jailbreak was to Roblox. It's amazing to see a community like this in any game. Wait, I forgot someone? Oh yeah, well, he's an exception to what I just said. Yes, he was influential. But the question is, was it a positive influence? Note, even though this content creator is responsible for some of the toxicity in the Jailbreak community, please do not send him any hate. Even though this person was and still is toxic, it's not right to be toxic back. Thank you. My username's this. One of the most influential Jailbreak content creators of them all. Not just because he made content on Jailbreak, but because Jailbreak is his whole channel's identity. I mean seriously, most of his videos since Jailbreak was released have been on Jailbreak. Fun fact, did you know before Jailbreak, my username Zis used to play a lot of Treelance? This one's for all my Treelance viewers out there. This one even surprised me. Anyways, back to Jailbreak. As of writing the script, I found a guy by the name of TSHenry139, a small YouTuber who made a video describing how my username Zis could have been the fuel to the toxic fire of modern Jailbreak. He made a 3 minute long video describing my username sis past actions and how they could have influenced the community negatively. First point he made was back in the early days of Jailbreak in his channel, before he was as big as he is now. Back in 2018, user used to stream snipe fellow YouTuber Creekcraft, and then spam L afterwards. Anyone in the gaming community with a brain knows how disgraceful and disrespectful stream sniping is to the game and its community. Not to mention the fact that he added to L spam afterwards which in itself is classic toxicity in any game. But that's not the only thing User used to do. User is one of the reasons no one in modern jailbreak knows what a camper cop is. Don't get me wrong, campers have always been annoying in the community and have always been a huge point of controversy. But User added to this by calling anyone on the cop team campers, which led to the modern toxic 9 year olds to call you a camper just because you arrested them. I see these people all the time. T.S. Henry goes into other points of things User has done, such as hating on Creekcraft, Asimo, and Bad CC. He also apparently would blame Asimo for any bugs in the game, even though A. Bugs are natural in every game, and B. Asimo is the builder, not the programmer. As for modern my username is this, 
I can't really say he's changed much at all. In a more recent video of him, arresting toxic players, he ends up showing how hypocritical and egotistical he can truly be. In the video, he goes around arresting pretty normal people for 90% of the video. Then whenever he finds a player that, when he arrests, they show the slightest bit of emotion or opinion in the chat, he twists what they say to make them seem like the bad guy. He does this by saying things that imply that the person he arrested said or meant those things. So in the end, he ends up slandering the different players he arrests, and makes it seem like they are the ones being toxic. My username sis is probably the most hypocritical Roblox content creator I've seen. With all the videos he makes on arresting toxic players, you would think he knows how to be respectful. But no matter what, he was and will always be toxic. I don't know about you, but twisting what people say to make them seem like the bad guy in a YouTube video to defame them is not only toxic in the Jailbreak community, but extremely disgraceful to the YouTube community as a whole. While I continue to stand by my point of not sending him a hate, I can't ever find myself respecting him as a content creator. After all, how could you respect someone who doesn't even respect the community that brought them up? The Jailbreak community never recovered after that massive blow. Now looking at the community, most servers have toxic players and or hackers. Hackers, however, were caused by the massive spread of Roblox hacks online, and not user. But it's because of people like my username sis that so much of the community is like this today. And the Jailbreak community was left a fraction of what it used to be. But this is not the end of Jailbreak. On February 17th, 2018, Roblox hosted the 5th Annual Bloxy Awards, and as you can imagine, Jailbreak and Badamo were featured. On that fateful day, Jailbreak, Badamo, BadCC, and Asimo3089 earned a grand total of 12 total Bloxy Awards, including the Builderman Award of Excellence. Those awards include Favorite Breakout Game, Best Original Character, awarded to Asimo3089, Best Roblox Developer Toy, also awarded to Asimo3089, Studio of the Year, awarded to Badamo, Game of the Year, Most Concurrence on Desktop and Xbox, Most Concurrence Overall, Games You Spent the Most Hours Playing, Most Visits Desktop and Xbox, Most Visits Overall, Most VIP Servers, and the Build-A-Man Award of Excellence. This was a direct indicator of how influential and important Jailbreak was to the community of Roblox as a whole. Jailbreak also second-handedly won awards if you count creators making content based on the game. These awards include Best Comedic Video, awarded to Video Tales, and Best Fan Art, awarded to Jailbreak Artworks by I Don't Have a Use. To give you an idea of how impressive that is, the amount of awards Jailbreak won for the 5th Annual Bloxy Awards is more than twice the amount Adopt Me won for the 7th Annual Bloxy Awards, which is 5. So for those who you think Adopt Me is better than Jailbreak, EAT MY <laughs> Besides the jokes, this was a massive deal and a huge honor. No other game has earned nearly this many Bloxy Awards in one single year. You could say all you want about Jailbreak. Oh, it's just a trend, and no one plays that game anymore. I thought me and Piggy and better. And well, first of all, you're all wrong. Second of all, it doesn't matter how much Jailbreak has fallen off. It doesn't matter that 2017, 2018 was probably its peak in numbers. It doesn't matter what games have beaten it in records. Jailbreak still stands as one of the most influential games on Roblox of all time. It changed the course of how game development would be on Roblox forever. After that, so many other good Roblox games appeared on the site, and even if they weren't good, you could at least argue they were amazingly developed. Jailbreak brought a renaissance of great developers and great developed games to Roblox. I mean, I've never played World Zero, but I can argue the game looks amazing. It was Jailbreak's influence that changed the course of Roblox games forever. Without it, Roblox would have probably never been the same. But the story? doesn't end there. Oh, the lava's rising, guys! What? Oh, 
Oh, <laughs> the city is sinking. The screen is shaking, guys. On November 8th, 2018, Jailbreak celebrated 2 billion visits with their first and Roblox's first ever in-game live event. This was huge for Roblox, as a live event of this magnitude has never been pulled off on Roblox before. This was one of the biggest monumental moments of Jailbreak history of all time, and it really set the stage for what to come. In their live event, on top of the epic show of the volcanic eruption, Batamo revealed their newly remodeled Jailbreak City, which was improved and looked better than the last one. And then, two years later, for the three-year anniversary of Jailbreak, they did yet another live event that revamped the city. Let's just say, both the event and the new city were way better than the last. The reveal of the new cities from these live events also set a new standard. It showed that Jailbreak was not going to be a game that just focused on adding new things to keep the community happy. It showed that the developers were always going to focus on how they can improve the game. Whether that's from adding new features or improving upon old ones, this is one of the main reasons why I feel Jailbreak is such a good Roblox game and is better than the others. The main focus is improvements, not new additions. We can hear this from Asimo himself when after the game's release he states, I continue to learn how important efficiency is. Every update, I'm always looking for ways to make the game run better. Every feature addition involves trying the same thing multiple ways, to make sure it can run as well as possible for as many people as possible. We want everyone to enjoy Jailbreak. You see, it didn't matter what the update was, Batamo always focused on making their experience better for players. From new robberies, each one better than the last, new cars, with each one coming with better models, changes to the map, whether that be building revamps or revamps to the terrain, it's always an improvement. You see, Jailbreak was always an improvement, to itself and Roblox. This, plus all the other impacts that it's made, it's a reason why Jailbreak is the most influential game in Roblox history. Jailbreak to this day continues to be the most influential Roblox game in history, always breaking barriers with every update. But with all this talk about Jailbreak's past, we haven't even talked about present or the future of Jailbreak. So now I ask the question, where is Jailbreak now? As of just last month, Batamo put on the third and most recent Jailbreak Live event to celebrate the fifth anniversary of the game. With that came a way bigger map, a whole new amazing robbery, and overall, a whole new game. Playing the update myself, I was overwhelmed. The game looks and feels so new. With adding the new part of the map, they revamped many things in the old map. The train path has changed with the old tunnel being abandoned. The bridges have been revamped to look even better. The volcano base, being the most revamped structure in Jailbreak, got another revamp, which is better in every way. And the power plant was moved next to the revamped cargo port. On top of that, revamped airports and a second city, new highways and roads, new mountains and hills, and many other map and terrain improvements show how much the game has grown and improved over the years. This update was nothing short of monumental. I mean, to an average Jailbreak player, this will look like an amazing update nonetheless, but overall, this is probably the biggest and best update in Jailbreak history. The new map may feel a bit empty, but I see it as a reflection of the early days of Jailbreak. Not much to it, but it has much potential. Overall, there couldn't have been a better update to celebrate and represent the 5 year anniversary of Jailbreak. But what have the developers been up to? They're the ones who make the game after all. Well, for the main builder, Asimo, as of April 5th, 2021, officially quit his retail job and started working on video games full time. As for the main programmer, BadCC, he just graduated from Duke University last year. So now he is also developing video games full time as well. This is a massive step for the both of them. For just being two young Roblox developers, being able to work on video games full time is a massive accomplishment. These single accomplishments will allow them to continue work on Jailbreak and other video game projects more often and for years to come, as two of the most successful Roblox developers on the Roblox platform today. But wait, we never answered the question. What was the most influential point in Jailbreak history? And how do we answer that question? Well, it's hard to tell. The only one who could really tell us is BadCC or Asimo themselves. So I asked Asimo himself. On Saturday, April 30th, 2022, 
SEMO held a Q&A for jailbreak providers in which I attended. There I asked him the question, What do you believe was the most influential point in jailbreak history? In which he told me that he believed the most influential point was when they did weekly updates. I would say weekly content updates. I don't remember any game doing weekly content updates until we dropped our release. Nowadays you see Adopt Me and other games doing weekly updates, and I, I, I do think it's the future of games. I'm going to be honest, I was not expecting that answer. Simo is right though. If it weren't for them starting the trend of weekly updates in the beginning, what other game would? This is what I mean by Jailbreak constantly influences Roblox and breaks barriers. Sometimes, Jailbreak could make a huge influence and we wouldn't even know it. There is no doubt that the next 5 years of Jailbreak's future are going to be bright. So where are we now? Jailbreak is officially 5 years old now and still manages to break barriers and improve. It doesn't matter how much the community has gone toxic. It doesn't matter how much the numbers have fallen since 2018 and it doesn't matter how other games are taking over Roblox today. Jailbreak still and will always be the best Roblox game at breaking barriers, being influential, and changing the game of Roblox forever. Even right now, I would argue that Jailbreak community is growing stronger and influencing the game in their own ways. Jailbreak may not be the same game it was five years ago, but it continues to be the most influential Roblox game on the platform to this day. Even if you don't agree with me, there's one thing you can never change. Jailbreak will always be my favorite Roblox game of all time. It would take a whole miracle of a game to ever even make me think of changing that opinion. Happy 5 year anniversary Jailbreak, and thank you Bad CC and Asimo for creating the best Roblox games that Robloxans have ever seen. And thank you viewers for watching. My name is JamesCGaming24, signing out. Have a good day, Asimo. You too.
now we're gonna get YouTube channel plugs. Be sure to follow JMC Gaming Twenty Four. <laughs>